And we're back with one of my favorite guests, Mr. David Ingram, who most of us know from both Bolt Thrower, Benediction, and a slew of other bands. He's here today to talk about one of his other bands, Hellfrost and Fire. Welcome back to the show, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's uh, always a pleasure. <laughs> so, Hellfrost and Fire, old school death metal, kind of in the vein of Celtic Frost. So, Dave, tell us a little bit about how and why this band came together, as well as who else is in it. Okay, well, it was, it is rather, myself, uh, Rick Demusis, I believe that's how you pronounce his last <laughs> name, and Travis Ruvo. Uh, myself and Rick. Uh, sorry, Rick's going to be on guitars and bass, Travis will be drums, and myself on vocals, of course. Uh, Rick and I got together uh, musically. He heard my performance at uh, the uh, Maryland Death Fest when I was there with Halo Bullets, mm -hmm. and he said, wow, I've got this idea for a project, and maybe Dave would actually fit with this. Um, and what it was was his band that he had at the time called Gath, G-A-T-H. They did a cover version of... Um, dethroned emperor by celtic frost mm. he wanted me to do the vocals for it and i did and it gave us both the idea to move on and do something together a full album um and me being the huge celtic frost and hellhammer fan it was the uh, the ideal jump off point to, to get that project done and um Rick came up with all the music, I came up with the lyrics, and obviously Travis was there with his drum drum uh, parts, and um, it, I think we've put out, or we will have by the time you hear this, this March the 18th it comes out, um, we'll have a, a really old school death metal album in that vein, and I'm very, very proud of it. And well, and this is your debut album, right? Yes, that's right. We, we've got two others, uh, we got the music for two others ready, um, no, no lyrics or vocals on it yet, but uh, yeah, it, it's there to roll when we're comfortable with what we've got. So we, we're still working on that. It, this, yes, you're right. This is the debut. So the debut album. Um, by the time this airs, it'll be out. Uh, Fire, Frost, and Hell off of Transcending Obscurity, and I listened to it again. And after listening to it, you know, after listening to so much freaking extreme metal music lately, it's really nice to hear some like good old school death metal that's still kind of. Dan's on its own. Like you said, it kind of got that, you know, Celtic Frost vibe going on, but it's still like your own stuff, you know? And it's just, it's really nice because it doesn't sound like a repeat of every other death metal band out there. So what was your kind of mindset on writing this album and what did you kind of want it to sound like? I mean, were you going for, you know, kind of that Celtic Frost thing like you kind of mentioned already? Yeah, well... Been the 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 album cover artwork, the layout of it. I, I wanted it to be reminiscent of the first Celtic Frost release, mm -hmm. uh, Morbid Tales, and I, I'm I'm hoping it got that, but it's still got its own visual appeal to it right. itself. Um, and musically, yeah, there was definitely the, the Celtic Frost thing for me. Um, a, a lot of people have said, oh, it's more like Hell Hellhammer, um, mm. but lyrically and the, in the, the lyrical flow. Um, I actually looked at the uh, Two Megatherian album and the lyrics, not the actual lyrics, you know, uh, uh, ripping them off, as it were, but it was the lyrical flow of how... Right, they uh, were Tom, presented, yeah. Yeah, exactly, how, how Tom sang them and, and the, the, the nuances he put in them. And I tried doing that, in, in <clears throat> adding my own touch to it as well, mm -hmm. but um, taking that and um, bringing it to the forefront of the, the vocals. And so it's not just... Uh, your standard death metal. Yep. There is a lot of heart put into this. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's, it definitely stands apart from the rest. And and it sounds really great, Dave. I'm like how you were mentioning. I'm like, when you listen to it, you definitely get that vibe. And, and you really did your... Uh, geez, you're almost like when those actors study other actors to kind of, you know, oh, get the <laughs> same <laughs> Yeah, method acting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the words I'm looking for there. So it, it just it just came off really good. And like you were mentioning with the album cover, spot on with that too. Because when you look at it right away, it's right away it pops you of nostalgia. Even if you can't remember if it's from a Celtic Frost type of thing, it's some kind of familiarity. You know what I mean? And it's just, I just love yeah. the way it's all put together. So tell us a little bit about what some of the songs are about then. 
Well, in fact, the, the, the whole album, uh, lyrically, not musically, but lyrically, it's a concept album, it's a story mm -hmm. um, from start to finish. And the, the story is, it's about, if you look at it from the point of view, it's a, a fantasy world, uh, like the ones in uh, uh, Mordor in uh, Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. or um, was it Westeros in Game of Thrones? I can't remember the, all the names. Um, but it, on the album, it's a, a, a fantasy realm called Meridian, which is um, it's, it suffers a, a civil war, and uh, the, the 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 leader is taken down, and a new one appears, and he's a bit of a tyrant. And it, it's a long story of how how that um, the, of that realm, and then it goes from the beginning and at the very last song. It sort of goes back on itself and loops to the start so as if the whole thing is stuck in a time loop and can just continues and uh, i was thinking with the next album would should i do and i'm actually going to ask fans about this people who listen to it so i was thinking maybe the next one could be a story in a haunted house cool. or something similar like that and i don't know what to do with the next one i don't know if i should continue the story of meridian or if that's already been told now so, but yes, this album, it's um, a, a concept album, lyrically, and I'm, I'm proud of the lyrics as well. Well, that's pretty cool, and yes, that's a good idea, because I'm sure you'll get a lot of bizarre things from fans, Dave. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if I use something, I'll, whoever gives it to me, I will definitely credit them. That is so cool. And you have some pretty snazzy formats available to the public, including a gatefold vinyl with uv lamination no i don't know what the hell that is <laughs> but the album sure is snazzy what other things do you have to offer and where can people go like pick all this stuff up i i think the, the uv thing is um sold out it's like if you got a, a you know a black light in your room the the, the vinyl oh glow. cool yeah <laughs> I, 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 I don't have one of them. i have a small torch <laughs> no 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 big uv lamp in, in here but uh no um uh, yeah, it, it's all at uh, Transcending Obscurity Records. You go to their website, it'll link to the band camp, um, and you can pick up, there's lots of different merch. There's hoodies and shirts and shorts and tees, and uh, there's, there's the CDs, the coffin-shaped CD box, uh, the different variant vinyls. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff. Um, he's really throwing the, the, the whole uh, kit and caboodle in for this one and we're very proud Kunal at uh, Transcending Obscurity Records is doing a great job. Now is this going to strictly be like a studio project? Well it, the same with every other studio project that I've done <laughs> uh, that, that has stayed studio. Um, <laughs> it, it, it depends. It mm. depends on the popularity. Um, we, we could move on and do some live shows absolutely but we have to remember that two of the guys in the band are in America, I'm here in Denmark, and they're in different places in America, one's in Texas, I think, and I can't remember where, where Rick is, but they're, they're a distance apart. Oh, no, sorry, Travis is in Florida, I think, not, not Texas. I, I apologize, Travis. Um, and, yeah, so having this big distance, it's difficult, um, and also we don't have a second guitarist. The guitarist on the album, uh, who does all the solos, is Scott, Scott Fairfax, <laughs> from uh, Memorial, mm -hmm. As the World Dies. So we're, you know, we'd, we'd need a, a second guitarist as well as, as uh, being able to get together. So we definitely need major backing from, uh, from something to, to help get this off the ground because we need to rehearse a lot as well. So again, it's all down to the popularity of it, how well mm -hmm. it's, it's taken and uh, how far we can push it as uh, individuals as well as a band. Well, right now we're enjoying the debut album from you. And, and before we go, Dave, where can people go to learn more about the band? You know, what websites do you guys get out there? Well, we just have a Facebook page, really. Perfect. Uh, it's, it's, it's enough. It's enough yep. these days. Uh, um, the thing is with Facebook, because of their rubbish algorithm, uh, <laughs> it doesn't pop up in people's feed. So I would just say, if ever you want to know something about the band, Search for the page and read through it. You'll get all the details. There's reviews of the album. There's uh, songs on there that you can stream via YouTube. Again, go on YouTube if you want and look for the band name. Um, there's stuff on there. I believe, actually, right now, the entire album is streaming on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, which I think is 
it's a cool thing. Uh, people can get to hear the whole thing, and then if they want, then they can decide which variant, vinyl or CD or whatever, or if they just want digital. Now, it, it's a perfect way of doing it. It's like a little preview there. And like you yeah. said, everything on your Facebook page, there's a million freaking leaks on there. People can go to Bandcamp. You know, it'll be the Transcending Obscurity Bandcamp, and they'll have all those really cool things to click on. Like, I love that album. It's all these really cool colors. And now that you talk about the black light thing, I almost feel like I, I need to get the black light, put it on the album, and it'd be, like, pretty trippy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that. I, I might even have to purchase a black light to hang over the stereo. <laughs> there you go. you got to just experience that whole new realm of listening to this album without acid. Yeah, yeah. It's like being back in the 70s all over again. <laughs> there you go. And there you guys have it. Hell, Frost, and Fire have a brand new album out, Fire, Frost, and Hell, off of Transcending Obscurity Records. And Dave, as always, thank you for coming on the show, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Jay. It's always a pleasure.